everyone. Welcome to our new session entitled Ovarian Cancer. We are glad to welcome Dr. Claire Openau, gynecologist oncologist at Baylor College of Medicine. Uh, today we are going to discuss all the aspects of uh, ovarian cancer. We know that it's one of the most common uh, gynecologic uh, cancers that has uh, the highest mortality rate. So uh, welcome, doctor. We are glad to have you with us today. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. Thank you. So uh, our first question, can you tell us what is ovarian cancer? So ovarian cancer is, as it sounds like, cancer that starts in the ovary. Um, so cancer, by definition, is an overgrowth of cells that have become abnormal and that can invade into places it's not supposed to be and spread to other places it's not supposed to be. Mm -hmm. um, and so ovarian cancer can start from lots of different types of cells in the ovary, which is how we get different types of ovarian cancer. Um, the most common one is what we call a high grade epithelial ovarian cancer. And actually that kind of cancer, we have some studies showing actually starts in the fallopian tube, um, for some people or can, at, or can start on the peritoneum, which is the lining of the abdomen. And so ovarian cancer in some ways also encompasses these fallopian tubes and primary peritoneal cancers that we diagnose and treat in the same way as ovarian cancer. Okay. So, uh, and what are the early signs of ovarian cancer? Unfortunately, those can be very few. And that's mm -hmm. part of the problem with ovarian cancer is that it has few early signs um, and is often diagnosed late in its course. Um, you can have sensation, uh, well, ovarian masses, so growths on the ovary that sometimes a patient can feel in terms of pain, pressure, um, but otherwise when it starts to affect the intestines, you can have some, um, um, fullness, difficulty eating normal, big meals, um, nausea, vomiting, bloating, um, swelling of the abdomen. Um, those are usually so with, the, with the usual checkups uh, at the doctor, at the gy gynecologist, we cannot uh, detect, uh, ovarian cancer. It can be hard to detect early. So unfortunately the pap smear does not check for ovarian cancer. Um, we don't have a good blood test for ovarian cancer. Um, and so often most women are recommended to have a yearly pelvic exam where the doctor will feel the uterus and the ovaries. Mm -hmm. And then if they feel some growth, um, they can send for more imaging like ultrasounds or CT scans, but that can be even um, with a pretty big growth, it can be hard to feel. Okay, so what kind of screening tools we have to detect uh, ovarian cancer? We unfortunately don't have good screening tools for ovarian cancer. Um, mm -hmm. Unlike the pap smear, the colonoscopy, the mammogram that we know work very well, we've done big studies on millions of women looking at ultrasounds, looking at blood tests, and we don't have anything that helps detect it earlier or helps with mortality from ovarian cancer. Um, okay, so who is at uh, high risk uh, for ovarian cancer? There are some types of ovarian cancer that run in families. Okay. Um, so almost 20% of the ovarian cancers that we see run in families. And so um, someone who has a first degree relative, so a mother, sister, daughter um, with ovarian cancer should be evaluated to potentially um, have some genetic testing. Um, or be just a little bit more closely uh, screened and, and, and watched. Yeah, okay. So, um, doctor, we, we, we hear about uh, ovarian cysts a lot. Is it related uh, to cancer or is it uh, cancerous at the, most of the time or, uh, or no? No, so ovarian cysts are not usually cancerous. Your mm -hmm. ovaries will make cysts every month during ovulation. Mm -hmm. um, usually those cysts go away, um, but sometimes they stick around, they fill with fluid, and so they can remain for a while. They can be a little bit bigger than usual, but the large majority are not, um, are not cancer. Mm -hmm. um, it is something that we keep in mind, especially for women after menopause, when they're not supposed to be going through the menstrual cycle, um, that if we do see cysts, that we do want to be evaluating that a little bit more closely, either with repeat ultrasounds, with close follow-up, or actually with surgery to remove them and have the pathologist take a look at them. And uh, is it the same with the fibroids also, the same uh, procedure? 
So fibroids are growths on the uterus and those are growths of the muscle of the uterus. And so those are not related to the ovaries at all. Okay. They're not related to ovarian cancer at all. Okay. Very rarely there are cancers of the uterus that can look like fibroids. Um, but most of the time fibroids are benign and fibroids do not turn into cancer. Okay. So uh, doctor, can you tell us about the stages of uh, ovarian cancer? Yeah, so the early stages, stage one and two, are ones that are confined to the ovaries um, and, the, and potentially the fallopian tubes. Um, the more advanced stages is when little pieces of the cancer have spread to other parts in the pelvis. So usually the are coating little pieces of the bowel um, or into the upper abdomen. So once it's involving the surface of the liver um, and, and the stomach, and then sometimes it can spread to the lymph nodes or to the lungs. Um, which would, again, be stage four, um, the most advanced stages. Okay. So uh, what about the cure? Is it, is, it cu is it curable? I mean, the ovarian cancer or uh, only at the early stage? The early stages are the most likely to be cured. Um, the more advanced stages, unfortunately, um, are a lot harder to cure. We have made a lot of progress. We have many new medications from the past five to 10 years that have prolonged survival. Um, and that are working to, we're working to make this a, a chronic disease where we can treat over and over either with Medicaid, with pills, with chemotherapy agents. Um, and we have, we have patients that will be living, you know, 10 plus years with advanced ovarian cancer because the cancer keeps responding to the treatments. But unfortunately, um, we don't have a, a good cure um, at this point. So uh, surgery is the first uh, choice for uh, for a treatment or no? Is it... So when uh, after a diagnosis with ovarian cancer, usually the treatment is a combination of surgery and chemotherapy. And part okay. of the discussion and evaluation with um, the doctor is which one do we start with? Okay. So is it something that can be removed with surgery now at diagnosis or is it something that we want to shrink with chemotherapy first? remove everything that's left over and then give more chemotherapy afterwards. But usually um, our goal is to have a combination of the two, um, the two treatments. Okay. So uh, is there any association between hormone uh, replacement, replacement therapies and ovarian cancer? Um, no, so, uh, I actually consider uh, hormone replacement therapy very safe. Um, okay. They've done, so they've looked at multiple aspects of this. One is um, birth control pills. Yeah. which is hormones. Um, and they actually have found that that decreases the risk of ovarian cancer. Uh -huh. And for women who are high risk, um, I see a lot of, I do a lot of genetic testing. And so I have a lot of women that have genetic syndromes, such as BRCA, that put them at a risk of 20 to 40% of ovarian cancer over their lifetime. And we find that we can decrease that by 50% by giving them birth control pills. And uh -huh. even average risk women, if we stop ovulation with birth control pills or with an IUD or other forms of hormones, decreases the risk. Uh -huh. um, hormone replacement after menopause, um, we generally don't recommend for longer than, than just a few years, uh -huh. um, up to about 10 years. Um, but there is no strong association with ovarian cancer. Okay. And when do I advise women to... to uh to take off their ovarians, for example, if they are at a high risk of uh, uh, of having this cancer? So I see a lot of people who um, have these genetic syndromes. So women, there's um, about a dozen at mm. least that we know of um, where we do recommend removing the ovaries. And the timing for that can range from age 35 for the very, very high risk to around the age of menopause, around age 50 for some of the ones that tend to occur later in life. Mm -hmm. um, outside of that, there are some... So the risks are based on, on what? You, do you evaluate the risk based on the genetics or uh, the family history or, or the combination of all? Exactly, a combination of all of that. The genetics play a very strong role. Um, I do have many women who have a, a strong family history um, but nobody's gotten tested. And so I, those are definitely people I talk to about removing the ovaries either after finishing um, childbearing or around the age of menopause. 
I recommend anyone who needs their uterus removed to have their fallopian tubes removed at the same time, because we know that many of these cancers can start in the fallopian tubes and the fallopian tubes don't make any hormones. So they don't, it doesn't put a woman into early menopause if we're removing the fallopian tubes with the uterus, okay. um, if they desire to keep their ovaries for other reasons. Okay. And is there anything between breast cancer uh, and ovarian cancer? So there are um, many of these genetic syndromes, like the BRCA, the PALB2, um, and many others that also come with breast cancer. So some women that have a strong family history for breast cancer may have an increased personal risk of ovarian cancer because of a genetic change that's associated with both of them. Um, having a breast cancer or the breast cancer treatments themselves do not increase the risk for ovarian cancer. Um, in and of itself, but because of some of the underlying risks that are similar in genetics. So uh, a woman with a breast cancer, do you advise her to do more screening or tests every year or uh, it's not necessary? That, not necessarily, no, unless she has an underlying genetic risk um, mm -hmm. or a strong family history of, of ovarian cancer. So uh, the last question, doctor, is it, uh, is it, uh, Uh, can be prevented, the ovarian cancer can be prevented, and uh, in um, what are the ways to prevent it? That's one of the hard things. I, I yeah. It's very difficult for me to give concrete advice. I have many patients that come in and say, you know, I've done everything right. I'm healthy. I exercise. I eat well. Why is this happening? And I, mm. it's not anything that someone does or doesn't do. I think like I'm, some of the things I mentioned, so birth control pills, especially in high risk women actually can decrease the risk of ovarian cancer. Um, going to a doctor every year and just making sure that you're talking about the GI symptoms, any new pains, any abnormal vaginal bleeding um, so that you can be evaluated if anything sounds a little bit abnormal, I think is important. Um, they're always being healthy, There, there are some ovarian cancers that are associated with smoking. There are many other better reasons to stop. Um, but otherwise, most of the lifestyle things, unfortunately, don't, um, don't help all that much. And we don't have good imaging like a mammogram for the ovaries that can detect it early. But it's good that we have uh, new medicines to, uh, to treat this. I do. Kind of and cancer. I do believe that we're curing more women than yeah. we ever have been right now. Um, and we have more coming um, in terms of medications to help uh, with these um, for these patients. And so I do think that there's a lot going on that's very hopeful. And mm -hmm. when I talk to patients with a new diagnosis, I tell them that I, you know, I do have patients that live for many, many years, spend many years off of chemotherapy. And I truly believe that we are actually curing some of these women as well. Um, and so there's a lot to be hopeful about. Great, doctor. Thank you very much for your time and for uh, this uh, hopeful uh, discussion for all women out there. And uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you so much.